This is just for tolerance. Yeah. Uh, okay, well, thank you for coming and making this continuous effort, which is very appreciated because it is hard to, to, to do something again and again. Um, we will exchange. You can come into the photos. Okay. <laughs> you exchange some piece of paper. Or Emails are good. One of the homework by emails, and uh, I see some pieces of paper on the table. Yes, and you, Bye. you did? Thank you. Thank you. No, I, I can. Of course. And I was going to share something printed with it. So who we are. And what are we doing? We are in the computational chemistry class. Some of us are chemists, some of us are material nanoscience program members. Did everybody get this one? Oh, it's a big, big one now. No, it's not big. You do not need to read anything. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a, um, how to say, what is the right word if you get something for free? In addition to? Supplemental? No, it's, it's too, too academic. Bonus. <laughs> <laughs> so it's bonus kindling for your fireplace. But uh, it is. It has arrived a little late. Uh, it would be mostly appropriate like one or two minutes ago. But if you are super curious and you throw a glance through it before you put it into fireplace, you can extend your knowledge and background regarding the optimization of chemical structures. For example, if I would be Seth, I would immediately look onto the last page. Because it does address his question on uh, which methods are used to deal with models with several local minimum. So one of them that we briefly discussed is uh, simulated annealing when one heats it up and cools down and repeats again and again. And uh, this one I understand how to do. And another one is something super modern when the, there are computer codes that mimic uh, natural evolution and come to several confirmations. And uh, it doesn't belong to the subject of computational chemistry, it does belong to the subject of cheminformatics. But uh, it's completely different mindset, but you could be aware of this uh, area of human knowledge. So there, I skipped the front pages, but those are most, uh, those are pages related to geometry optimization from several textbooks and from uh, Gaussian manual that you may scroll through and, and enjoy. Yeah. And, uh, one of the things that you may recognize and appreciate, or maybe hate, is the flowchart diagram in the middle. It's a little bit more complicated compared to what we did in, um, on the blackboard and in class, because some of the black boxes, like computation of the potential energy surface, uh, is provided here in much more details. So this uh, is a little more detailed description of how the geometry is being optimized in a little different language. But you see that the overall idea of uh, self-consistent cycling until optimal point is found, like incremental, is uh, used everywhere. And it is our, one of the, our take-home messages. 
Mm. Let me look on my cheat sheet. Good. <coughs> so we are completing chapter one of the course and um, the information that we went through in previous whatever two three weeks was a background for separating variables for getting major concepts and, and uh, language and uh, approach optimization and practically we are able or we will be able soon to build any chemical model more or less um, you are doing your fair share of contribution to the course by making presentations our next meeting and then you would enjoy this uh, <laughs> learning curve on using this <laughs> sophisticated environment uh, so please uh, send your slides ahead of time like by midnight on, on Wednesday so uh, that I'm try I will try to come a little early and upload all of them here so that we do not spend too much time on like if, like I, if I come with member sticker no I don't know I will tell it by words so it, <laughs> <laughs> um, and if you see this um, overview of the course I changed it a little bit original plan was to do this presentations uh, earlier so I am going to glance through what we did before a little overview session and then jump into introduction of the next chapter when we will stop thinking of nuclear degrees of freedom and we'll start thinking of electronic degrees of freedom so um, upon I will give couple of introductory words today and uh, upon you complete your presentations on Thursday we will forget about nuclear degrees of freedom for a long time we already had enough of them um, so here is the little pseudo laser it started working you, you see it? <laughs> Super. So, <laughs> I'm happy. So, we quickly go through what we did before, and uh, we will identify main challenges with um, electronic degrees of freedom and just look on how one approaches them. So here is the list of presentations that I hope everyone approves. Majority approves. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I want to bring to your attention that more than half of the class have already submitted preliminary versions of the slides. If you are not in this half, and, but you want to hear some constructive feedback, try to rush and, and uh, submit them. Also, the philosophy. Why do you, why do, you do these uh, presentations? Do not tell because it is requirement or whatever. I don't care, I'm happy just for you coming here. <laughs> There, there should be some uh, more uh, stronger benefit for you. And the idea is that you are intellectual elite of the globe. You are very busy people and you do not have time to, to do as many things as you could. And therefore we do, a, although in the lab we cover all the material, we do a little split of responsibilities and each of you can put a little bit more effort on a specific subject and then present, teach, deliver it to the rest of the class. 
in form of sharing the experience. So if you, by putting a little bit more effort and organizing it for a presentation, you may cover some aspects that others didn't focus on. And you may do it a bit too for all. You cannot be completely non-formal. You should do like goals and conclusions as everyone does in any presentation, right? But uh, uh, then you can be a little curious and free, browse and explore. Like, okay, what will be if I touch this button? Everything collapses. I should tell it to my colleagues. So, um, one aspect. Another aspect. I will try to find a way to make a breaker, maybe bring in old-fashioned alarm clock that will buzz when uh, someone speaks too long. Because uh, right now, for first idea while preparing presentations is that, oh, I'm so tired, I cannot speak long. But as soon as you really start preparing, you went, okay, I won't cover this and this and this, and instead of three minutes, you speak for half an hour. It goes naturally. So we, we need to like, try to organize the sessions that we do not uh, overflow two hours at least. If you feel, if you complete everything in half an hour, it will be a big success. But I do not do it. <laughs> um. And think of, uh, you may think of what is benefit of the, how the skill that each of you are presenting can be used further in the course, just your, your own vision. And how this skill can be used for your personal academic research. If you have such an idea and you share it, you may, uh, it can launch a flow of inspiration to the rest of the class. Some ideas can be very uh, non-trivial. Who is here? Why am I showing him? <coughs> oh, okay, so you, you know this, uh, this name. This um, is an old guy who um, made a contribution in describing electronic degrees of freedom that we will touch by the end of the of the video. And what I like in uh, his um, biography from Wikipedia that um, he was after retirement he was working at the quantum theory project in Florida where I was doing my postdoc. And uh, another interesting thing that he um, ended his life during the scientific conference on the, uh, on the Senegal Island. There was a uh, relatively famous conference for quantum chemists where each of us can go after completion of this course as a professional quantum chemist. <laughs> and uh, I think we still have much longer time before in our lives and so honor a profession. <laughs> so what were we doing? We have uh, agreed that I will be just looking on this cheat sheet and verbalize it. A any of you can, can do it. I'm just lazy to call you and speak looking at it. So we will have models. We already have, some of us have models. We will throw them in a black box with hardware and software, and we will get observables. And then we will repeat it again and again for the rest of our life and uh, get credit for it. Um, from physicist and computational chemist, a molecule is a collection of ions and electrons, and each of them have Co coordinates. So it is uh, this little picture. Oh, nice. um, so by setting up interatomic distances, one can build up 
the molecular Hamiltonian that is plugged into molecular Schrodinger equation that we may want to solve just out of curiosity. And then, because of two large number of degrees of freedom, molecular Schrodinger equation is split onto two Schrodinger equations, one for electronic degrees of freedom, another for nuclear degrees of freedom. They become independent if we do so-called Born-Oppenheimer approximation, if we neglect non-adiabatic couplings, which is possible if system is close to ground state, has not much temperature, and is away from um, burning, explosion, photochemistry, then Born-Oppenheimer approximation is good. Nuclear degrees of freedom can be reduced from quantum description to classical description and uh, cast in the form very similar to Newtonian equations of motion with a very little contribution from quantum uh, properties, which uh, brings us a little different potential energy surfaces for ground and excited states. For electronic degrees of freedom that we will start dealing with in, a, not in a minute, maybe in 10 minutes, 15 minutes. The, there are three terms in Hamiltonian. Kinetic energy of electrons, uh, energy of electron-electron interaction, and attractive force from positively charged nuclei. Right? All simple. Potential energy surfaces may have more than one minimum. Test recognizes it at most. And uh, we did neglect this part and uh, practiced optimization algorithm by hand. I better go along and collect before I forget. Good. Did everyone get convergence or some were diverging? Did anyone get explosion of harmonic oscillator? No? Okay, it's a good sign. So although we were working on the, in the vicinity of uh, global minimum, but we recognize that in real life one may deal with more complicated things. And one of the substantial achievements in the course by now is that we agreed, at least no one was protesting, for uh, optimization algorithm where the best minimum, minimum of energy as a function of internuclear distances is found by browsing in the space of interatomic distances and the minimum is achieved much quicker than compared to scanning of all possible um, nuclear configurations. So instead of scanning the space, we selected just a path that brings close enough to the minimum. And we have formulated in the form of this uh, silly diamonds and boxes, aka flowchart. Going again, 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 until completing the convergence criterion. So it is our uh, asset that every of us is probably able to repeat and present if, if needed. OK, now we take a hammer, nails, and nail down ions to whatever they are. They stop moving. Here is your homework one. So we remove kinetic energy of nuclei and we remove the 
nuclear nuclear repulsion. So we have only the kinetic energy of electrons, attraction between nucleus and electrons is the minus sign, and the repulsion of electrons. So this becomes our Hamiltonian that starting from uh, next Tuesday we will be dealing with maybe like 15 meetings or almost until the end of the semester. Is there any dependence on uh, nuclear position? Of course, yes, because property of a molecule is determined by chemical composition of ions and their position. Composition and position. If one changes position, the uh, attraction to nuclei will change. And uh, in quantum uh, language, the energy of ground, excited, electronic state will also change. So it is everything we do is parametrically depending on the electronic degrees of freedom. Mm -hmm. Withdraw, last sentence. Nuclear degrees of freedom. A lot of people, a lot of researchers, historically and uh, in real life, do not count activity related to nuclear degrees of freedom as quantum chemistry or computational chemistry. Many people consider that what we did until today was something entertaining, not serious, and uh, actual computational chem chemistry starts today when we focus on electronic degrees of freedom. We already did a big look through because we separated nuclear and electronic degrees of freedom. But what is the number of electronic de degrees of freedom and do we have any chance to solve for them? Just from scratch. Writing the Hamiltonian, fighting United States. If you select theoretical chemistry, your passion and profession, you may defend the thesis on solving problem for three electrons. It was possible to select it as a thesis subject 70 years ago, and it's still possible today. To do four electrons, more or less precisely, it will be really cool. But uh, as soon as we have substantial practical number of electrons, uh, Exact solutions are, well, there are no theorems that <coughs> solutions are unavailable, but there are no practical ways to find them. And uh, we need to accept this fact and seek for opportunity, seek for algorithms, seek for approximate theories that would allow to find wave function that depends on huge number of uh, electronic coordinates in more or less precise way. So this is very good definition of computational chemistry. Find theoretical approach or an algorithm that allows to find wave function of electrons in a molecule, all electrons in a molecule, in relatively precise way. Make sense? How many electrons do we have? One, two, three, five, four, n. Oh. And what is the numerical effort? So here is a little estimate what, what it is. If we practice the same Gedanken exercise, some mental exercise, not real experiment, that we represent each degree of freedom numerically as a set of grid points. And then develop a space for numerical solution. How many grid points? What is the size of our, um, what is the dimension of our wave function? Let me 
illustrate this. If we speak on the language of quantum theory, then wave function is has how many dimensions? At least two, typically infinite number of dimensions. Like if it is spin two dimensions for anything, it is infinite. And if you do discrete space, like even one coordinate, the number of dimensions is number of grid points. So one dimension, 10 grid points, so it is a 10 dimensional problem. If you have two dimensions, it's 10 grid points, it is 100 dimensional problem. And 100 dimensional problems are okay for today computers and even million dimensional problems can be diagonalized. There, there are problems. Is, uh, there are um, efficient tools to solve such problems. But what if we have typical molecules? Like uh, one hydrogen atom, three dimensions, so it will be thousand, thousand dimensional problem. Okay. H2, million dimensions, one carbon atom, 10 to the 18 dimensions, even if you lose a lot of precision if you do just 10 grid points per degree of freedom. And then if you do a set of then it goes to uh, uncountable number that uh, never will be possible to, to deal with uh, numerically. So it is just a little illustration that even if we forget about analytical solution, accept that we need to solve it numerically, the exact solution uh, for wave function in grid points for multi-electronic system is not uh, tractable with today and tomorrow computer facilities. So this is same as, as original. It is main challenge. So we cannot Quantum chemistry doesn't give simple equation as a um, solution for molecular wave function. It is not possible. It will be always numerical and it will be simplified. What have we done when we were separating nuclear and electronic degrees of freedom? The keyword is hidden somewhere here. Did we not use it on that? No. Huh? To get it into a one electron state? No, it was on the previous slide. Separation of variables. So if there are many degrees of, if, if, if there is a function of many variables and equation for this uh, function, we may want to simplify it by getting larger number of equations for functions of uh, smaller dimension, of smaller number of degrees of freedom, right? I can happily draw it, but if uh, we still have it in uh, our random access memory, <laughs> I can skip it. So, separation of variables. Big wave function of all variables would, it would be nice if a big wave function can be represented as a product of wave, function, wave functions of smaller number of, of degrees of freedom. Multiplication, yes. 
I just uh, I just wanted to make sure instead of assuming the position. But what is the specific feature of any scientist? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> it's not not only scientists. Uh, to be suspicious when it deals with professional things. So we we have a suspicion if it is possible. So it is more like a goal and dream. We are not sure that it is literally possible, but we may we may check it. So it is our navigation in our space of unknown concepts. This may be right, may, might be wrong, but we will try to reduce a function of many degrees of freedom to products of a function of uh, fewer degrees of freedom. This uh, is unavoidable. But such simple product could be not quite correct. I hope I, I didn't tell anything uh, intellectual offensive. <laughs> I don't think so. He didn't bring his stuff, so. Okay, okay. So, um, when Jabot, can you help and draw something on the, on the blackboard? Something what? So, um, can you rewrite the Hamiltonian? The, I will dictate you and then for first line and second line you write yourself. So T sub E plus V sub E E plus V sub E and capital, all three terms in brackets, times phi large phi equals E times the same phi. So um, when you compare top line on the on the board and the the line that you have written, in which case uh, the top line may become correct? We can write a Hamiltonia T E would it just need to be an eigenvalue? Eigenfunction? Um, no, 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 just tell something by word. Do not, do not write, just tell something. When, make correspondence, when your wave function of all electrons can probably, when we have chances to decompose it on uh, one electronic wave functions. If the all electron be considered as a one charge particle, I mean charge density. Formally, just mathematically. Forget all your experience. Oh, in mathematically? Mm -hmm. So we can run just cross one one term in the in the Hamiltonian. Is that probability of this one? Mm -hmm. So then we compare this one because the same energy to this one. Vn equal to zero. Hmm? Vn equal to zero. Yes. Just cross V E E. Oh, this one? Yes. No, no, no. V. Cross it out. Cross it out. No, no, no. Not this one. Another one. V E E? Yes. Okay, thank you. Yeah, sufficient. Now I take the <laughs> drawing responsibilities. So. 
generally, if the if we do have Hamiltonian that apply only to one variable and Hamiltonian that apply to second variable, and it applies to product. Then one can split there are, there are mathematical ways to prove that one can split it onto H one depending on R one acting on small phi depending on R and second equation, second Hamiltonian acting on second uh, and then the overall wave function R1, R2 could be represented as product R1 times phi R2 this is possible only is a summation, right? Everything is good. This VV sub EN, it is charge of electron minus one times charge of an ion number I, which is positive, divided by R of first electron minus position of ion. And then we do summation over all ions. So this is a part of attraction from nuclei to the first electron. Plus, we do the same minus one minus z Part two minus e for second electron. So it is also a summation. So if it would be only first term and second term T sub E and V sub E N the life would be comfortable but fortunately or unfortunately but there is a specific that there is an electron electron propulsion so there is a term that has 1 divided by R1 minus R2 and this term makes the separation of variables wrong or not exactly applicable so we still can't think about language of uh, separation of uh, variables but it will pr be predominantly approximate predominantly I, I do not want to say word wrong I want to say word wrong but in a polite way uh, it will be a methodology of limited precision. <laughs> <laughs> so the bad guy is V sub E. But if we assume that we live in a variable where electrons do not know each other, one electron bumps into another one and who are you? I do not know you. I do not know you either. And then they go further. They do not collide and change their trajectory. If there is no interaction between electrons, then the decomposition of the wave function onto a product of one electron wave functions would be a good way to do. It would be more precise way to do than it is in our in our way. So, 
electron electron interaction is a bad term or problematic term. term. But mathematicians whose responsibility is to serve us didn't design anything better than separation of variables. So we still need to, do, to deal with it. We accept that it's a uh, low precision approximation, but we, we need to deal with it. So uh, the idea, the plan is to find eigenstates of electrons that do not interact. So assume for a short time that electrons do not interact. Find their eigenstates, build those products, and then slowly introduce perturbation that appears to such wave function due to electron-electron interaction, which can be small or can be huge, but we do not have other possibility. If you start uh, from electron electron term as a leading term, uh, it's math mathematically intractable. The most comfortable way is to assume that the, the interaction is not small, but even if, if it is not small, we, we should start assuming that it is small. Do we add it adiphatically? Hmm? Do we add it adiphatically? So slowly from negative infinity to present. No, no, it is not as simple. So um, people are working in the area of computational chemistry in two directions. One, applications, describing real systems and properties of materials, and another one is consistently improving the theories that allow to describe this multi electron wave function. And there is no consensus, there is no gold standard theory that describes everything. Or if there is a theory that gives high precision, it is very low uh, performance in, in relating to numerical cost. So it would do. And there are still debates and developments of how to make this approximation. So there is no final work. This is, uh, let's put it in a positive way. It is a rapidly developing area. So in case there is no electron-electron interaction, then a molecule will look like a collection of hydrogen atoms of different uh, charge, right? There will be no bonds. There will be just uh, electrons around ions. And therefore, the hydrogen atom is a, is a so good model and it is used widely. So if we assume that there is no electron-electron interaction, and this I just want to give credit to Dr. Mikhailov, who prepared this slide for me when I was in the conference and he was substituting me. Uh, <laughs> so if we remove the electron-electron interaction, then the decomposition on product of one electron wave function is possible, and each wave function, one electron wave function, will be the same as wave function for hydrogen atom. Do you know how the wave functions for hydrogen atom look like? No, let me for, uh, reformulate it. Um, as uh, professional scientists, are, are we expected to know how hydrogen wave functions look like? Are we trying mathematical formula or that probability? Something. It, it is in some high school, right? Clouds. S, P, D, S, P, D S, right? G. So if you're in chemistry, you can draw them with closed eyes, probably. If you're in other areas of uh, knowledge, probably not. 
So, um, <laughs> I'm assumed to, to know it with closed eyes, but I admit that I don't. So, uh, there are spherical functions, there are some prefactors and combinatorial stuff that are by putting in quantum numbers, the main quantum number and orbital quantum number, one can get mathematical shape out of this uh, equation. And here they are. So even if we do not remember them, we can always go to quantum mechanics textbook and borrow it, or just from Wikipedia. And uh, quanti qualitatively, we know how they should look like. So there, are, there is a main quantum number that corresponds to energy. And uh, for each value of main quantum number, there is a uh, range of orbital quantum numbers and range of magnetic quantum numbers. And it, this gives the higher the energy, higher the orbital quantum num number, there is a larger number of different projections of uh, magnetic momentum. So when it is d electrons, they are four petal flowers and one donut. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, if uh, it is f orbitals with uh, orbital number three, then it is a eight hex nuts. Don't you see it? Eight. Not, no, uh, eight divided by two, four. <laughs> let me, let me try to draw them. Okay, and uh, when do you practically need them? When you deal with polynomials. Yeah, for example. Medium. Okay, you do not need to be as heavy. Um, yes, if you do gold, you already need them. Uh, and uh, you, you specifically need start needing them when you deal with lanternites, where the uh, open shell is built by completing the 4F. Uh, 4F is, is the outer shell that is being completed, and uh, then one may want to refresh this uh, pretty shapes that look a little ugly if uh, 
a non artist tried to draw them. Um, did I screw them up or they look more or less reasonable? Okay, I, no one objects. I don't mind <laughs> them being this way. So, and um, the different, I don't know why he put it there, but you know it, how the ASPD orbitals uh, distribute electron density in space. Some of them, they all are localized near the center of ion, but some of them have uh, uh, zero near the center and then min maximum, and then they disappear again. So it is uh, S, 2S, and here is the P orbital. So zero near the center of ion, then a little maximum, and then it goes to zero at infinity. So what is the reason of why most of good quantum chemistry courses contain hydrogen atom? Many of us can live without hydrogen, but Introduce later determinants? Uh, we will. Later. Later, we, in, we will introduce later. Uh, the hydrogen atom wave functions and hydrogen like wave functions are building blocks to build any um, wave functions. By making products of hydrogen like wave functions centered at different ions, we can build wave functions of any molecule if uh, we follow certain approximations. But there is a challenge. And the name of challenge is spin. So because uh, the electron has additional degree of freedom, uh, the immediate product of this small one electron wave functions is not possible. One can try doing it, and many people, uh, even names of these people are known, were trying to practice it, and they were giving very uh, poor precision results. So if one neglects spin and represents all electron wave functions as product of one electron wave functions, it doesn't work. And in order to take into account spin and uh, anti-symmetry, one needs to build those products in a specific way, which has name of... Yes. Uh, let's draw one of them. Uh, let's draw one of them on the backboard too. product does not work or give poor results. But if one swap the places of the wave functions, or swaps the arguments, then everything works very well. And this uh, originates from the spin degree of freedom of, of an um, So the reason is that if one swaps the counting of electrons, electron number one becomes electron number two, electron number two becomes electron number one, the wave function must change its sign which can be achieved in, in this construction. Um, are you happy with this long plan? You do not need to be happy, I'm not happy. <laughs> and many people are not happy with that. So there, um, there is no way to avoid this feature of wave functions, but there is a way to shorten this notation a little bit. So if one builds a matrix
So if one builds methods of uh, orbitals with different indices and different arguments, just counting all possible uh, situations. Since we have index of orbital 1 and 2 and the index of uh, position 1 and 2, there will be four options. And then we must uh, practice the mathematical way of finding the term, which will be main diagonal minus sub diagonal. One obtains the same construction that provides uh, anti-symmetry property. And the authorship of, uh, of this exercise that all young people consider as torture and hate uh, in uh, science courses, uh, do not blame teachers, do blame Dr. Swade. So the, we do not know the exact path how we will achieve our main goal of many alternative wave function. But the general plan is that we will try to separate variables as much as possible. We will try to use hydrogen-like wave functions in the vicinity of individual atoms as building blocks. And we will try constructing uh, wave functions with help of slightly determinants. And then we will need to bring in the electron electron interaction. During the course, we will cover some simple theories that partially address uh, this challenge, but uh, the activity in this direction is yet active. Um, I think it is enough. For, for the game, unless there are objections. So, um, I will stay here. Yeah, there's nothing. It is the same what I what I've, uh, told. When I was showing it, um, Determinant represented as matrix, uh, finishing the material. And um, when I was presenting this material previous time, at the end there were questions about uh, refreshing the non adiabatic coupling. There are just some equations from, from previous life that you probably are aware of. So, Lecture number eight is dismissed. Thank you for coming. I will stay here in case some of you have some questions, and I will be happily answering questions by emails. We meet uh, next time Wednesday night, not night, Wednesday early evening, like 5 p.m. And uh, uh, would you, where do you prefer, in this equipped room or in the M M S material modeling studio. Doesn't matter. No options. So you, you delegate me right to choose. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Thank you much. Dismissed. Dismissed. Stop. Mm -hmm.